Good morning, friends. So I'm about to get ready to go get my hair done, but I thought I would come show y'all my outfit. I'm about to post this on TikTok at some point. I just have on my New Balances, and then this dress is actually two years old from H&M. I've never worn it. That's crazy, right? And then this bag and my Coach hat that I got from the Coach Outlet. My hair is so soft using that Food for Solve um, shampoo that I showed y'all. And then my necklace, my Janae necklace from, what do you call it? Julia? Jewelry? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very comfortable. It has splits on the side, too. I do have another one of these dresses. This one right here that I have worn. That's also from H&M. I'm going to try to find something similar so I can link it for y'all. But anyways, I'm about to go work for a little bit, and then I need to leave out by 8.45. The time is now 8.05. Hey, girlfriends. So we're headed to my hair appointment. Baby, I look like somebody, girl, mama, with a little bit of change or song. Talk to me. <laughs> Seriously, we're headed to my hair appointment. I don't know if I want to get, I'm getting the middle part, but I don't know if I want to get my hair curled or straightened. Maybe I should just do curls. It's probably more festive. But on straight, just it does something to me. Anyways, can y'all see? See me, can you see me, can you see me now? Huh, huh, huh. Alright, when I get that, when I get a record deal, y'all talking ish about how I can't sing right now. Don't ask for my autograph later. Okay. Just kidding. I always be hungry after I get out of the uh, hair salon. I need something to bring my sugar back up. Anyways, guess I'll focus on the road. After I get my hair done, I'll come back to you guys let you see what it looks like. Same old, same old, but show you anyways. And then we might go to American Eagle because I have a sweater that I need to return. Anyways, guys, let me focus on the road. See you in a bit. All right, y'all. We're about to go on Target. My curls are still a little tight. They get what they need to be by the end of it. It's super busy in here, but it is the holiday, so um, Maddie was staying home from school yesterday because she wasn't feeling good. Sorry if it's windy. And then my baby Bean woke up this morning with a fever. Um, and she was saying like, when her throat hurts, she just says her tongue hurts. <laughs> so I'm about to go in here. Child, who blowing? I get instantly offended. But yeah, um, she's like, not feeling it. So I'm gonna go in here and get her some ibuprofen real quick. Okay, so one thing I do, when I come to Target or any store is I go and grab like a small shirt from somewhere or the umbrella covers and I put it over my cart because I don't like touching these carts. Sit y'all look. All right, that's a terrible view. Maybe I'll put y'all in the cup holder. I need to get my squiggly thing. Oh, let me get my phone right here. Girl, whatever. Ooh, is that a dress? So I thought this was similar to what I have on right now, but it's not. All right, let me get out this clothes section. Ooh, it's a little old for me. So what's funny is when it's the summertime, I want to go to the workout section. When it's the wintertime, I want to go to the pajama section. Let's see, those look like skims. They don't look like they gonna hold up. I don't need to be in here. These little pajamas are cute, jockey, with the little matching thing. I think I want the gray one. Not meant to be. They don't have an extra small. Oh, it's got splits at the end. How much is this? I'm not shopping. Music is killing me. It's cute. Y'all, the Saints fans got beat by the Falcons that one game, didn't y'all? All right. Let's go see what I can find. Who asks for real music in Target? Where the hell am I going? I cheer. Um, 
body wash for Beanie. And then this matching bubble bath. Do they have medicine over here? Yes. Girl, they out of Motrin. It's the last one. It's that season. So I'm gonna her this. All right. I think that's it. Target said they are wrapping up this Christmas stuff ASAP. <laughs> it's empty. These roofs right here are on sale. I think they're 30 or 40 dollars which is still high and these are on clearance right now for 70 dollars interested to see what the spring stuff is gonna look like i'm excited about the refresh at the start of the year not the wind disrespecting me like that <laughs> seat coat Anyways, let's run to American Eagle real quick to return something. I'm so proud of myself. I didn't buy something just because I seen it. Might not be the case in American Eagle. It's a little dusty up here. I need to go wash my car, but that's not happening today. I told Char when she got in here, I said, I got kids. Is that a car? I got kids. Don't be judging me. Meanwhile, she getting in the front seat where the kids don't normally sit, nor do they eat. So the crumbs are because of me. <laughs> well, I blame it on them. I swear, I go clean up this car and then all of a sudden it just, it's like shit just fall out the air. Just fall out the air. I'll let you go, girl. You're looking at me like that. Oh, okay. All right, y'all. See how the uh, American Eagle. He taking back something to American Eagle in the Abercrombie bag. They're basically the same thing. If she don't back out this dog on parking spot so I can get out. It's still entering. Look at it. Man, you can't back in and out. You gotta reconsider them driver's license. I'm joking, y'all. I know everybody out here trying to drive recklessly. I appreciate her being safe. I don't even think I have y'all. Hold on. I'm trying to see if they have the same one so i can just do an even exchange oh their critics are cozy not as cozy as abercrombie but oh i think i found them oh, mother's calling You want the small and the extra small? I want the extra small. Extra small and the small? Okay. I have the size as much as that. That's why I just oh, Okay. My bag goes. Here. Okay. I have rewards too. Okay. Sorry. Right. No, you're fine. I have one more. Real quick. Did y'all hear the lady? I don't know if y'all can hear over the music, but it was two cashiers and they were one was helping me and one was helping the other girl. Granted, the other girl had some other stuff going on. She had her calling customer service and stuff about her credit card or something. So the lady behind me had been waiting for a little minute. She was like, excuse me. Now you see two cashiers, clear as day, three customers. She walks this whole little behind up there and was like, excuse me is there anyone that could help me check out and she said the girl who was helping the other lady was like um there's two people getting checked out right now so she's helping her i'm helping her so we'll get to you as soon as we can she said okay there's just somewhere i've got to be you don't think anybody everybody else in this mall sucker got somewhere to be i get it but at that point you make the decision to just i don't know leave <laughs> I thought it was so funny. Like, they was just going to make accommodations for her. Because she got somewhere to be. The entitlement. This be shit. What are you doing? I'm about to make me some, um, what's this called? French press coffee. Because I really want, when we went to the Einstein Bagels. Did I mention this? I don't know. There was a, it was vanilla hazelnut and like the smell and taste of it so this is a french vanilla one that i got it's probably expired but the worst that can happen is that i actually get to go to the bathroom so um where is it 
I don't need hot water. My husband been using the hell out of my little uh, snag thing, which I'm very happy for. Because I haven't been using it like that. But since I got, I didn't get rid of the, um, the Keurig. I just put it underneath the cabinet or in the dining room area. And he's scared to use the Breville thing. This is zoomed in. He said he ain't touching it. So I do this. Really hope that coffee tastes good it might be a matter of me changing my coffee creamer too i used to use coffee made hazelnut coffee creamer not the one that was non-dairy and my coffee just used to taste so much better i don't know maybe it's just me maybe i'm just tired of all my coffee tasting like i'm about to make me some eggs because i'm hungry and i don't drink coffee with regular food so I'm gonna have to remove this shirt I got on up under here because it's hot. Babe! So tomorrow is Friday and we're supposed to go ice skating at the Avalon. I might have mentioned this before. Um, I haven't done 25 Days Christmas, Norfi, all of that stuff in quite some time. And I feel bad about it, but at the same time, I wasn't really expecting to be so busy during the month of December. I, girl, sorry, I got some mama, what's name? I take that back. I expect it to be busy because December is always busy, but I didn't expect to be working two jobs. And I'm trying to stick out with the part-time job, but girl, it's coming a bit much. Just their demands because it's just, I am the go-to person and I'm used to being the go-to person and I don't, like oh, that but um yeah i just felt like you know being good me and Cheryl were talking about like our jobs and corporate america and stuff like that and how being good at your job is a gift and a curse because on the one hand you have that visibility you're given those opportunities they throw money at you left and right but then on the other side of it is like you're the person that they expect who much is given much is required my sister always says that to me whenever I would complain about my job. And ever since I've been consulting, I don't complain about my job that I can see. And I think the reasoning for that is because it's temporary. I can always have that in the back of my head. Like, I don't have to be here for long. It's temporary. If it's not working out, all I have to do is nicely tell um, the, the, the firm, consulting firm that I'm working for that, you know what, I would like to kind of roll off this project and move into something else. I like that freedom and flexibility aspect of it. I also like that if, you know, I decided, you know what, I want a break from work. It doesn't look bad on me because I'm consulting. On the other hand, there are some people who just don't like contract work on your resume because it looks like you can't hold a full-time job for whatever reason. I'm not really concerned about that. If I wanted to go back into the workforce, I feel like I've built good enough connections to be able to go back with no issues at all. Um, but I don't know if that's something that I want to do. I was talking to Char about that. Um, just sometimes I question whether or not, like what would my life be like if I just said, you know what, I'm not going to do this whole content creation thing. I'm just going to focus fully on being in corporate America and growing and climbing the corporate ladder. But that was exhausting to me. I also did not like being in management. I take that back. I'm not going to say I didn't like it, but it's, there's a lot of downs, uh, downsides to management, especially if you have team members who are not the strongest or they're lazy or whatever the case may be. It, it shifts from, okay, I'm managing adults to I feel like I'm at home with my kids. And I didn't like that. 
when you had a solid team, like the job was amazing and it opened up just new doors. It allowed you to view things differently. Cause sometimes you don't, you just don't get to see that when you're just, you know, at the bottom, check, checking numbers and stuff like that. I've been appreciative of my experience, of course, but I, I was just drained. And then the corporate politics and being told, y'all know how many times I was told, especially at my last job, how I needed to seem like I was more interested and engaged in the conversations in like meetings and stuff. And anybody who knows me personally knows that I have a terrible resting face. So I look like I'm not interested. I look like I'm mad. In reality, I'm just zoned in. And I, I didn't really like that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like feeling like I had to basically be one person at work and then be so exhausted when I came home that I had zero social battery to actually have a social life. I hate it being around people. I wouldn't say that I was being fake at work or anything like that, but if you're a black person or you're a black woman, especially in corporate America, you know you got a code switch. You can't be 100% yourself. Anyways, I don't even know how we got down that rabbit hole. But because there's vlogmas, all I can do is talk if I ain't doing nothing else. So here goes the chat. So, oh, I need to get some cheese. That's like one reason I really enjoyed my, um, my little dinner date with Char because it's just something about meeting people, new people at the phase and where you are now in your life, where you're, you know, you know yourself more, you've done the self-reflecting, you've done the self-building, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the conversations are more productive and it's not hyper-focused on who people want you to be or who people thought you were or how you acted in college. I had a bad attitude in college, I'm not gonna lie, and I feel like that stuck with me. Like people expect me to be just this hard, outer shell person, when in reality, I'm very compassionate, I'm very, like goofy and a lot of people don't see that they come over to my youtube channel people who know me in real life come over to my youtube channel like i've never seen her act like this before it's like i people don't get it because when i go out it's like i have social anxiety and i just want to be like in a bubble to myself i don't want to be like goofy and out there now get a few shots in me i'm gonna act up but just like my normal stuff i wouldn't so anyways when me and Char were talking, like we talked about our careers, like she's in corporate America, she's also doing content creation. So it's very familiar and you know, being around somebody who can relate to the struggles of both is very refreshing. But like I did post her, I was like, sometimes I would wonder like if I just quit it and come social ladder, like what that would look like. You know, she was just like, but you can have both, like, you know? Sometimes when y'all see pauses like this, um, it's because I don't like long clips. It's easier for me to edit short clips because I don't like listening to myself talk. So I don't want to sit there and listen to a four minute clip to figure out what portion of it I want to keep. Anyways. Um, thought I heard me. What I was saying was, um, when I first, when I first started out with content creation, I was very much like not concerned about anybody, what anybody else had going on, what nobody thought. I was in my own little bubble. I started my channel, my YouTube channel, in April of 2020 when the pandemic first started. We was first declared not to leave our behinds from home. And um, I used to shop a lot. I love shopping, I still do, but back then it was more impulse. And I got a thrill from adding to cart, checking out, it showing up at my house, me unboxing it, me hanging it in my closet. And the ultimate thrill was when I walked into my closet, I seen all these clothes hanging up with tags on them. I liked the idea of wearing it to some place that I knew I was never gonna go. So I just have all these clothes. And you know, when a pandemic started, we was all like, okay, we need to purge and clean and organize. So I started doing that. I've had my Poshmark for a very long time. I think since 2015 or 2014, sometime, some, something like that. So I started listing stuff on Poshmark. So when I would list it, I would just take a picture of the shirt or like the item by itself and list it. And I wouldn't really get no traction like that. Like I'm used to being able to sell on Poshmark, but it ain't, it wasn't to the extent that it was when the pandemic started. So I was like, let me just style the stuff so people can get a visual 
that you know this t-shirt ain't just gotta be thrown on with a pair of jeans like you style it real cute with a shirt me with a skirt and some thigh high boots some accessories da 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 so when i started styling my outfits it like sparked something in me so i was like maybe i should start doing like fashion related videos on youtube so that's why i started my youtube channel i was doing the try on hauls i was doing the hauls and unboxings i was doing the how to style i remember i did this video on how to style a graphic tee if you've been around since then then you know exactly what i'm talking about sometimes i'm like maybe i should just unprivate my videos so people can see the growth and see what the channel has always been about and not just be like oh they're cringy they're bad videos let me hide them so anyways when i started styling my stuff like girl I was meeting the USPS man at the door, aka the mailbox. Like, I got more packages. I'm pretty sure people was like, what does she have going on over there? Anyway, so my channel started as that. And then if you go back to my Instagram, I don't know if I've archived some of them, but a lot of them are like outfits and stuff. And that made me so happy. Like, my passion is styling. Whether it's me styling my home or me styling my body, like that is what makes me happy. But when it comes to like fashion and me styling myself, that's something that I do already every single day. I have to get dressed and it's just fun to plan clothes. I don't like the hassle of getting dressed and undressed and doing makeup and all that kind of stuff, but it excites me. So I really want to get back to that type of mindset. Here's a good analogy. You think about if you put a four year old in softball, for example. My kids started softball when that was four. They were swinging at that ball, very loose, not caring the world, running the bases, don't care who. They're having fun, right? But then as soon as your child gets in nine U or 10 U and they start learning the game, or hell, even before that, I think they were in six or seven U um, when they actually started like counting the points. When you realize that not only is having fun important, but winning is important, then you start to get in your head. And when you apply that to like being an adult in the content creation world, when you're first starting out, you don't know who checking for you. You ain't got no followers. Like you don't know who's interested. You're just putting it out there, hoping that somebody gonna pick it up. And then when somebody do start picking it up or does start picking it up, whatever the gram correct grammar is, and more and more people start to notice you, then the expectation comes into play and the pressure comes into play. And now you're in your head and you're like, crap, I didn't think about these people and these people, like what are people gonna think? And now it's no longer fun for you because you are now in your way. I feel like that makes sense, the analogy works. So I need to go back to my four year old self basically in this analogy and start having fun again and not be so concerned about what everybody is saying about this, that, and the third. Because like when I was talking to Sean, I was just like, I really, I'm just, I just miss when the content was fun. I miss when it was just effortless and I just wasn't so concerned about everything. I just really want to make it fun again for myself, regardless of what the content is. You know what I'm saying? Like I always said, I don't want to box myself in, da, da, da. Let's be real, home decor is my niche. And I definitely wanna nurture that niche. And, but I also want to tap into like my other passions. And I mean, I do it like here and there. Like if I go shopping and I buy clothes, like I show it to y'all, I show y'all my outfits of the day. I'm starting to post more outfits like on TikTok and stuff. But I create a whole nother Instagram just dedicated to, to fashion because I feel like if I pivot, I'll lose people. But here's the thing, losing people is not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes, like I'm not super fixated like on like my the numbers like I used to be like with how many subscribers I had. I used to be like road to this, road to that. Don't get me wrong, I want to be a 10k real bad. But sometimes I can see like if it was at I don't is it 93 90 yeah 98 something. Let's just say 9820. And then I go back on there later to look at comments and I can see clear as day, 9817. Like dang, I lost three people. But if I really think about it, I could have gained 100 and lost 103 and that nets a negative three people. But what about the growth? What about the 100 that you just got? Don't worry about them three people that you, you all you see is I lost three, but you're not looking at what you gained. You know what I'm saying? So through this journey, I pray, I pray a lot. Now pray for, for God to, to build a community of like positive people 
and to only allow people to be attracted to my channel who actually want to be here. So the silver lining in all of that is that if I did lose, let's say the 103 people, I lost those 103 people who don't genuinely like my content, who don't genuinely, I don't resonate with them and that is okay. I am okay with that. I, I'm not obsessed with YouTube like I used to be. I literally just create the content and I put it out there. Now, do I think a lot about like, oh, like I want to do like niche, like content that's not just vlogging? Of course. But when it comes to these other platforms where it's just like harder for me because I don't know, it's not on YouTube. I can't see who is made up of those 9,000 plus people except those who comment on my videos. So everybody else is just imaginary people. But over on Instagram and TikTok, I can clear as day and look and see who looked at my stuff, who is a part of the community. And that frightens me to put faces with the people that are watching my stuff. My battery's dying. I guess that means I'm talking too much. Basically in a nutshell, the silver lining in the loss is that you're gaining or they're, you're making room for the people who are actually meant to be in your community and to be in your corner and support you. Because here's the thing, why am I going on YouTube studio? Man, actually I don't see it on YouTube studio on mobile, but let's say I go to upload another video and I go to the content page, 99.6% likes. Which one of y'all subscribe to my channel and giving me a thumbs down? It ain't nothing but the devil's kids who use the dislike button. Cause that's the equivalent to you walking up to me in person being like, you know what, I don't like your outfit today. Like bitch, what you want me to do, go home and change? Why did you tell me that? Why are you disliking my video? You're a hater and you should not be here. You should unsubscribe if you don't like something. If you don't like it, but you like being subscribed to the person's channel, just exit off and be like, uh, I don't like this one. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let me fix my eggs. Cause I done said a whole lot. Coffee should be ready. I need to work. I'll talk to y'all later. But this is for anybody out there. If you're trying to get into the content creation space or if you're in it and you're discouraged and you're just like, I'm, a, I'm obsessing over the fact that I'm either not growing or I'm losing people, you gotta look at the silver lining, okay? Keep pushing, keep going. It is so inspiring to log in and see you keep pushing regardless. Like she's not obsessing over the numbers and like her confidence and just her everything is just so inspiring and i was like you know what i'm gonna just go ahead and start posting my content i'm gonna do all the things and just not worry about it and then meeting her in person and just having the conversation it was just like sealed the deal for me so here i am trying to show up but i'm gonna go for right now Sorry, it's a little bit loud. I'm about to show y'all the stuff I got from the mall today and then what I just got in from my order from Abercrombie. Some of the stuff is my husband, so I can't show y'all everything. Please hold. So I exchanged out this sweater. I showed y'all this previously. I got an extra small instead of a small. And then... I got me another beanie, it was only $10. And I think this is the name of a van, but I got it for the color. Cute. Plan on wearing with some cargo. Then, from Abercrombie. All right, so I got this out of the men's section. I thought this was so cute. I am into yeah. different prints and stuff. But let's see what it let's see what it fit like. Ooh. The inside of Abercrombie yeah. stuff is always, always. This is cute. I got it in an extra small. And then I got my nephew two sweaters. Oh, I got medium. That's a good thing, I guess. And then y'all know the gray set that I had got from Abercrombie. I just got it in this beige color and I also got it in extra small this time. I hope I like the way it fits. Yeah, so it's this color. The last set that I got in gray is a size small. So I thought this would be cute underneath this. She 
I made soft skirts. With my neutral new balances. And that's everything that I can actually show y'all. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. One last thing, I forgot. I got this in the store at H&M. They have this in baby blue. They have it in gray, I think, but it is a floor length like maxi dress. It's ribbed and it's super stretchy and nice. I can't wait to wear this. I'll probably wear it with some boots or even some tennis shoes. It was $31.99. And I think today only, y'all ain't gonna see this in time. You can get 20% off online, so. I'll link it for you guys. Now good night for real. I'm gonna wait. It's a new day. Look what happened yesterday. Can y'all see this? Y'all see that? This is why you remove anything that's plugged into your computer. Okay. So I had my hard drive. My head is so big. Plugged into my MacBook. And then um it fell. What is this hair coming from? Um, it fell off the bed and this bent while it was in my MacBook. I would have been mad if it would have broke off in there. So I get on Amazon this morning because I need this cord. Mind you, I have one of these cords, but I can't find said cord. So now I gotta wait until three to give me a freaking cord. And I am annoyed. So I can't edit the video I was gonna let go live today. Devil be trying his best to not let you be great, but I shall prevail. Hey friends, it's later in the day. So I told y'all that Bean didn't feel good. Eventually I took her to the doctor. She has flu. So we're not doing anything today. I haven't really bought like that, but I did do one of the 25 days of Christmas and these kids about to get ready to open it. Look at her. She's so miserable. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. She's hot. Yeah, I don't know. All right, go ahead and open. We're making... Making s'mores? S'mores tonight. Oh, yeah. look, what? what's that? Chocolate. I kinda Can I eat this one? one? That's why I gave y'all two. It's mine, Kenzie. Mm-hmm. Better order some pizza, some wings, some fries, pull up some drinks, and call it. So. This vlogmas day 14. <laughs> That's it, baby. Good day.